Hello and welcome to Donington Park, the GP circuit ahead of some Thundersport GB action in this show. We have got eight racers crammed into this hour and a half show, so stay tuned as uh, we bring you plenty of exciting racing action. It is dry out on circuit and first race for you is the Buff Headwear Thundersport 500. It's a full grid of these bikes and on pole position is the Seniors Cup rider there, number 53, Rob Morby. And uh, second on the grid, Adam Horton, currently fourth in the championship, number 411. Uh, there on the grid, Alan Naylor from Wakefield on the Donkey Box Racing Machine. Number 64 on the left of your screen there, uh, Adam Palfreman had a very strong brand hatch. This is round two of the championships and the lights go out. So away we go then for the Thundersport 500s. They all zoom down into turn one, the cheapest way that you can go racing in uh, Thundersport GB and into turn one. That looks like Carl Smalley with the whole shot. It is number 69, the rider with just about the brightest helmet in the field. He gets the whole shot. Of course, there's a lot of newbies, a lot of rookies out on circuit, those uh, wearing the orange bibs. But it is number 69, the championship leader, Carl Smalley, that has the advantage ahead of Rob Morby, who is currently second overall in the championship and uh, leading the seniors cup. Oh, a bit of a moment there for Number 96, uh, Jack Tynan, almost lost the front end, but it's still Smalley that leads here. Number 69, ahead of Rob Morby. Also on that front row, the grid was Alan Naylor. We mentioned 4-1-1. Keep an eye out for him as they go up in towards Coppice. And now on to the back straight, but moving up into uh, second place there is Tom Leonard from Stockton. Tom, who's fifth in the championship, he's really closing in on Carl Smalley now as they go down into the Foggy S's, and that's a nice clean move from Leonard. He moves up into first place, up into third is a rookie, Colin Mo Mooney from Stockton on the GT Group Honda. He's got the orange bib on, but down into the Melbourne Leap for the first time. It is Leonard ahead of Smalley. And that's Adam Horton, number 49, with a wide sweeping line, but he moves up into third place. Further back, there's some battling for places. I see a quick glimpse there, Jonathan Perry from Winsford on the Putaline Oils Honda. And uh, there's number 131, and number 2131 is James Adams. Oh, no, and there's a rider that's gone down there. Number 126, George Beale from Callington on the Pendragon Racing Honda. He's gone for a tumble, but he's up and OK. Down into turn one, change for the lead. And Carl Smalley, the championship leader, retakes the lead ahead of Tom Leonard. But Leonard has got a nice line going through Redgate Corner there, and he'll surely attack again as they go down into Craner Curves. As there further back is number 19, Harley Preble. Harley, who had an excellent round back at Brands, he's sixth in the championship. Back to the front we go, though. There is Tom Leonard, number 21, with the red and white leathers just tucked up behind Smalley. But uh, it is Adam Horton that is catching the pair of them. They're already coming up to lap uh, one of the uh, newcomers, but it's Smalley that still leads. Rather an aggressive riding style that Smalley's got there, but he's just trying to get as much of himself tucked in behind the front of that bike as possible. Of course, these bikes are all naked, really. There aren't any fairings, just the tank there and the front number board. So you'll often find that riders will tuck their left arm in. There you can see number 21, Leonard, doing that, just in the tank there to get themselves a tenth or two. Well, it certainly worked for Leonard. He takes the lead at the end of the back straight into the foggy S's yes, ahead of Carl Smalley. And now Adam Horton makes it a six-wheel fight for the front of this one. There's number 19 and number 888, eight, eight, number 19, making a lovely move there. 19 is Harley Preble. 888 eight, eight is Shane Parkin from Barnsley. There is uh, number 40. Further back is Steve Dufton from uh, Dewsbury. Right helmet there, you're not going to miss him on a dull day. And it's getting close and personal now. And Adam Horton has uh, not only gone up from third, but he's now making a, a shout for first place. And he gets up alongside Tom Leonard. And he's got it. He's made it stick, has he? Oh, no. Shut the door. Number 21 there, Tom Leonard. This is a great battle at the front of this race between these three and Carl Smalley, the championship leader, has been edged out at the moment, but they are side by side going through the extremely quick Craner curves down into the old hairpin. That's a rather odd coloured machine of Adam Horton. And he's going well at the moment. He's put in a quick lap there, 51.4, the quickest lap of the race so far. And these two look to be dropping Carl Smalley in third place. It's still Horton here, who uh, at the end of Brands Hatch managed to get himself 50 points from the four racers and he wants to get another 25 here for the back there is uh, number 199 Sam Smith number 74 Simon East from Gainsborough and then number 83 the bright colored bike Dean Dixon teammates 
with uh, previous rider, which saw him back at the front. It is Horton still from Leonard and Carl Smalley, the top three. Smalley here, he takes a podium, will remain in the championship lead. Rob Morby, who started off in pole position, he's just fallen back and there's a change for the lead again there. Leonard with a nice move. He's got that sus down into the Melbourne loop, just breaking a lot later than Adam Horton and they're getting a bit close here. Wheels almost touching between the uh, front guys. Last lap flag is out for this uh, Thundersport 500 Championship, sponsored by Buff Headwear. And the left arm is tucked in for Leonard, but just in his slipstream there is Adam Horton. I fear that Carl Smalley in third might be out of this. He's got his arm tucked behind his back as they go down into turn one now. And Adam Horton is taking the wide line, which will give him excellent drive down through Hollywood and into Crane the Curves. Is he going to make a charge on? Tom Leonard. The thing is for Adam Horton is that Leonard is so strong down into the Melbourne loop as we see once again there 888 and number 22. 888 is Shane Park and 22 Jack Little. That's the battle for the final points. Um, and the rookie there trying to get himself onto a couple of points but it is number 21 Tom Leonard with the advantage but here comes Horton and that was a brilliant move so much drive out of the old hairpin and Horton leads now as they come up to McLean's but Tom Leonard what a fabulous move that is these two really going at it hammer and tong just behind them Carl Smalling is just a spectator he can't quite get close enough to put his name in the frame onto the back straight we go it's Adam Horton that has the advantage from Tom Leonard, number 21, who's fifth in the championship. These guys separated by a point overall, and you can see how close they are as Leonard retakes the lead. What a great race this is from the Buff Headwear Thundersport 500. They exit Foggy S's. They're definitely going to be two abreast down into the Melbourne loop, and they are. It's going to be the last of the late breakers here, and Leonard takes the defensive line. Horton goes wide, which will give him lots of lovely drive up the hill towards Goddard's the final turn. Who's got enough in the back here? They're side by side, elbows down towards Goddard's for the last time. Carl Smalley cannot be counted out just yet. Checkered flag is out. They're so close, but it's going to be Tom Leonard with a superb race victory here ahead of Adam Horton. Carl Smalley could do nothing there in third place. What a race. It's one of those you just don't want to lose. And that is why Tom Leonard looks like he's just won the lottery. What a fabulous race here from the Buff Headwear Thundersport 500. Race one here in Thundersport Plus. Confirmation of the results then. You don't really need to see how much there was between them. You saw it for your own eyes. Leonard wins from Horton. Smalley third. Alan Naylor finishes in fourth place ahead of Phil Brown, who won the Senior Cup. And Mooney sixth. So there he is. Grimace on the face, but he's won it. Leonard from Houghton and Smalley, the top three. And in the Seniors Cup, it's Brown, Mooney and Rob Morby. It was uh, a very good race, yeah. It was uh, a lot of uh, good, clean racing with uh, Adam Horton and, and, and Carl Smalley there. Uh, the, the, it was just anyone, any three of us, I think, could have won it. But uh, in the end, uh, I did, and I'm really happy about that. I had to go a little bit tighter into the Melbourne loop there because that was a little bit of a weak part in the, in the track for me. Uh, so it was a good race, good, good clean manoeuvres. Uh, I tried to make the manoeuvres and make them stick, but it, <laughs> they weren't having it. Uh, but... Uh, Fortunately, uh, we got there. Uh, sponsors, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Worcester Bosch Crew, uh, NGK Spark Plus UK Limited, uh, John Hope Building Services, who's funded us for this meeting, and also Paul Wheatley. Uh, and I'd just like to dedicate this win to um, <clears throat> two people. Uh, the lad who died yesterday, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. This is a bit of a bad side of the sport. Some condolences go to his family. And I'd also like to uh, dedicate this win to uh, me mate, Andy McGladry, who died on a road bike last year. <clears throat> This team has been set up in memory of him, uh, so that was for you, Andy. Yeah, cracking rated, really, to be fair. Uh, nice and tight at the front, full grids, it's just unbelievable. Proper racing all the way through the pack. Uh, got into a bit of a break with um, the seniors myself and had a bit of a toe from my teammate. Dragged me right up to Rob and um, Mooney and um, from there it was all the way to the line. It was just fantastic. Uh, just like to have a quick thank you to uh, Uniport who've come on board this year. They've helped us out with the rebuild of the bike completely. Neil's Auto spent um, well, three months getting that bike running and it's just singing. It's great. Thank you very much. Well, don't go anywhere, folks. Join us again after the break and we'll bring you action from the A&R Racing Pre-National 600s. Welcome back to Thundersport Plus here from Donington Park, round two of 2014. It's time now for the A&R Racing Pre-National 600s. And on pole position, the championship leader by four points, Stephen Parsons on the Triumph. 
second on the grid there is number 57, Matt Truelove, who uh, is looking to get himself some points. And we've got a rookie on the outside of the front row as well, Dean Mulcahy. I say rookie, he's been with Thundersport for a, uh, just under a season now, and he is quick. He had a disastrous brand hatch where he uh, dumped not just his own bike, but uh, his teammate's bike as well. But he's back fighting here. He's on the front row, and the lights go out here. This a class for riders that are yet to attain a national license, and they're all out there on 600s. Whose idea was that? Brilliant. Down into turn one, it is Parsons that gets the whole shot, the championship leader. They all make it through neatly, and my word, he's looking to check out already this rider number 11 from Milnthorpe on the Giraffe Racing Triumph had an excellent brand hatch, led the championship with 68 out of 100 points available. All riders so far cleanly making it around the first few turns. There he is, the race leader, number 11, but it's a big fight. Look at the lead he's got already further back there. It's Adam Revel in third place. Number 50 is in third. That's Darren Ibbotson. I cannot believe the advantage that Stephen Parsons got early on, I can only suggest that he has just gone uh, guns out, blazing, gone for it in the first few laps, whereas some riders do tend just to give themselves half a lap to get warmed up. Well, that's certainly not what Parsons is doing here. He is getting straight down to business as he exits the Foggy S's. Oh my, what, that was an Im immensely strange line by Nick Edgley on the Triumph there. Almost wiping out a couple of bikes. How he's managed to stay on and not take anyone with him, I do not know. But uh, as it is, they stay upright as number 157 just goes through there. Charlie Morris uh, from Potter's Bar, a rookie for this season. Once again, the orange vests there for the rookies. And this lead from Parsons is growing. It doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to catch him here. And he will surely extend his championship lead as the rest of the crew come out. It was a really good start for uh, Nick Edgley, despite that moment down into Foggy S's as we get another glimpse there of number 95, uh, Dean Mulcahy, who smashed his own bike to pieces at uh, Brands Hatch and then smashed uh, Lee Shellcross's bike as well, his teammate. There's number seven just going through there, James May. Not top gears, James May, as I mentioned before, or another. 83 and uh, number 19, it's Ben Shuttlewood, and number 19 is Charlie Oakland. Uh, she's been with Thundersport since day one and is really getting to grips with the 600 now as Mulke, he tries to make progress uh, past Darren Ibbots and this the battle for second place that you see. Adam Revel at the moment, the rookie with the orange vest, is the leader of that battle on the lime green and black Kawasaki. And then it is number 50 there in third. Darren Ibbotson also on a Kawasaki. That's your race leader. He's home and dry. He could set up camp at the end of the back straight here and actually watch this battle going on for second. Jump back on his bike and he'd have the 25 points. But Adam Revel here, who just lost second place, has now regained it again down the back straight. There are no uh, boundaries in terms of uh, brake horsepower limit really in this class for Formulas and Superstock 600. So if you've got a bit of wedge and you can tune your bike then uh, fill your boots but these riders most of them anyway are all rookies or in their first full season of racing so really is normally down to the talent as they head up towards uh, Goddard's uh, back through the pack there is number seven James May who is uh, currently in the points just uh, behind Daz Odlin but ahead of Chris Wilkinson and Ben Shuttlewood there is number 10 it's Michael Dexter the big dog racing Honda and number 81 and number 80 is Stevie Elliott and Asa Webb. And those guys fighting for 18th and 19th. Surprised that Ace is a little bit further back than he usually is. This is local circuit and uh, Ace is definitely a top 10 candidate. So maybe just a bit off the boil here this weekend for him. But there is uh, Shuttlewood just going through ahead of uh, Charlie Oakland and then Chris Wilkinson, number 43. Those guys uh, well inside the points at the moment. Still out front, it is Parsons. He's got about a 10 second lead by the looks of things. I'm not quite sure why riders decide that a lime green number on a white backing is a good idea, but uh, number 83, uh, Ben Shuttlewood, has decided that that's the uh, route that he's going, which makes it very difficult to point him out from a distance. Adam Revel, once again, having fallen to third place, has moved back up into second again, so maybe just got a bit of extra speed underneath him on that Kawasaki, or he's getting on the power earlier out of coppice which is the corner before the back straight there's your race leader though Stephen Parsons who is looking in pretty good shape here of course these guys move from Donington here in Derbyshire to Snetterton in Norfolk for their next round quick uh, roundup of the top 10 as you can see Parsons, Revel, Ibbotson, Mulcahy, True Love, Rogers a fifth and sixth out of Edgerley, Brand, uh, Brendan Malander is in the top 10 as well as Chris Sanders who's sixth in the championship 
and uh, their last lap flag is out now for these guys so Adam Revel here just got to hold on for one more lap Dean Mulcahy who is obviously just settling for the points here after a pretty disastrous brands hatch but a rider that will win races this year mark my words it's uh, gonna be a win here though surely for Stephen Parsons on the blue and white triumph he's already through and here is the battle for second. In fact, I shouldn't count out Dean Mulkey just yet. He's very much in this race still. Adam Revel it is with the advantage at the moment uh, ahead of Darren Ibbotson. Further back there was number uh, 57, Matt True Love in fifth place. And number six there, Brendan Malander. And the bright Honda in ninth. Number five, Chris, uh, sorry, Brendan is in eighth. Chris Sanders in ninth. Number 92 there, Matt Johnston in 10th place ahead of Daz Odlin. But this is your race leader and soon to be race winner. There is the battle for fifth place between True Love and Rogers at the moment. True Love has got that on the uh, all black machine. There is Ben Shuttlewood just coming out, still battling for the final points. But the checkered flag is coming out. And that was a easily won by Stephen Parsons. Lights out to the flag, win for him. Second place does go to Revel. Third to Ibbotson. Now, where has Dean Mulcahy gone? You have to fancy that Dean's gone for a last gas move. I can tell you he has crossed the line still in fourth place, but he's five seconds adrift. Matt Trulove finishes in fifth place. Paul Rogers in sixth overall. So on the podium then, there he is. The tall winner, Stephen Parsons ahead of Adam Revel and Darren Ibbotson. Fantastic win there, Steve Parsons. How was it for you? Yeah, it was all right. It was good. We've been putting lap times in this weekend. I think we're competitive, and so we've proved it today. So we're happy with that. And, and so it was all right. Can't really complain. But it's spot on. But, but um, I'd like to thank GHS Racing. They've done a bit of suspension work with us this weekend and helped us out a lot. So I'd like to thank them. So then the marshals prepare themselves for the next race here on Thundersport Plus, the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Superbike and Super Sports. Uh, all the golden oldies, bikes and riders lining up on the grid for this one. That wasn't really very fair, was it? But uh, there is the championship leader, third on the grid, Oli Dupree. Second on the grid is John Dieterman on the Yamaha and on pole position, Richard Stedman, number 27. Uh, on that Yamaha there. Oli Dupree does lead the championship overall by six points ahead of uh, Shane Pearson. Richard Blunt, last year's champion, third overall ahead of Chris Norris. And then the Golden Era Super Sport Championship, it's Andy Whale that has a 10-point lead over Richie Harrison and Jamie Pearson. So we wait for the lights and away we go uh, for the start of this Golden Era Superbike Championship race down into Turn 1. John Dieterman there has got a great start, number 18, and he does lead as uh, these this looks like a million bikes on the grid head down into uh, turn one and last in there was uh, Jack Jeffrey on the Honda 600 but it's John Dieterman that leads this one from Richard Stedman and there's a big crash down into Crane the curve that's gonna hurt and that's Shane Pearson who's second overall in the championship oh no that might just cost him this weekend a big crash down into Craners. Nice to see these up and walking away, but we've already got a decent fight at the front of this one. Craig Jeff, I'm delighted to say, has got a lovely looking colour scheme uh, on that Aprilia ready for this round. The green, white and red, almost a Paul Bird Motorsport colour scheme, but it is John Dieterman that leads number 18 from Stedman, number 27. The championship leader, Oli Dupree, just on the outside there in the old Colin Edwards replica colours, number 65, and Craig Jeff just in the middle of them in 60. Oh, number four there. That's not the fastest way around the foggy S's, let me tell you. Uh, number four, Dominic Clegg, who uh, has been struggling in qualifying. We're doing so well in races. He's just uh, found the gravel trap. There is Chris Norris with an aggressive move down into uh, the Melbourne loop. Chris, who is fourth in the championship and finding himself a bit further down the pack than we used to see. But onto the start, finish straight we go. It is number 18, John Dieterman, who switched over from a Ducati to a Yamaha for this season, up ahead of Richard Stedman. And there is Craig Jeff also, number 26 and number six. Well, 26 is Chris Martin. Now, he started from 29th on the grid. Remember the name? Yes, it is. Chris Martin, of course, wealth of experience, British championship level, and ex-British Superbike Privateers Cup champion. And He's been in pretty much every single class you can think of. An extremely experienced rider. And uh, he's out there training for the old classic TT. And from 29th on the grid, they were struggling in uh, qualifying. But number 26 flying through the pack 
at the moment on that Kawasaki 750. Uh, we've got Richard Blunt out there, the defending champion number one. A few places back also, and there's a rider down in the background. That looks like Big Jace Dixon has gone down somewhere. It is number 62, Jason Dixon is down and out somewhere so hopefully he's okay and there's a change for the lead as Stedman takes the lead in fact John Dieterman has gone from first to third as Craig Jeff now moves up into second place Craig who is always there or thereabouts in this championship keep an eye on number 26 there and he's moved up ahead of the championship leader there he is on that Mistral Kawasaki what a race this has been from him from 29th on the grid I can't tell you how far back that is here at Donington Park Onto the start, finish straight we go, and it is Stedman that has the advantage here across the line ahead of Craig Jeff and then John Dieterman, who now pulls out of the slipstream. But in fourth place, there is Chris Martin, and he's going to move up into third. He nudges Craig Jeff out of the way. So Craig Jeff has gone from second to fourth. Good race this at the front of the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Bikes, and surely John Dieterman in second is going to lose out now to Chris Martin, who's lining him up into the old hairpin. Neatly done by Chris Martin and next up for him is going to be Richard Stedman. If only he knew what was coming. Uh, Chris Martin is absolutely flying and up neatly into the McLean's corner. The Mistral Kawasaki rider flies through. So much experience Chris Martin and he's showing them how it's done here in this class. These guys can only watch on in awe. Further back there we get a shot of the battles for... 20th, 21st, 22nd, that's Martin Bloomfield, Dominic Cleggie and Morgan, Brad Davey all uh, all there, but it's still Chris Martin that leads this one from Stedman, Dieterman, and Jeff and Dupree, the championship leader. In the Golden Era Super Sport is Mike Horbury that currently leads. He's eighth overall, he's up ahead of uh, Andy Well and Ian Popperwell. Nice to have Poppy, there he is, right on cue. Nice to have uh, Poppy back out in the paddock after that horrible injury uh, that he sustained that kept him out of racing for a while, but... Uh, He's just a madman, isn't he? But it's great to see him out there. This is local circuit number 26. It is that leads, though, and leads well. A 137.878 absolutely smashes the lap record. The significance of that is that the previous lap record belonged to a former British champion, Ian Simpson. That's how quick Chris Martin is going. Oli Dupree, the championship leader, as you see there. Uh, Nick Williamson, number six, a rider that was fighting for this championship a couple of years ago with Lee Reveley, uh, gentleman of the paddock in the top eight at the moment, holding his own on the SPE uh, one, number six, but it is number 26 here. Chris Martin that leads ahead of Stedman, number 27. There's John Dieterman still in uh, third place, but to free the championship leader is putting some pressure on him there. That's it so far. Join us again after this break. Welcome back to Donington Park here for Thundersport Plus. The last lap flag is out in the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Superbike class. And having qualified 29th, the experienced Chris Martin is uh, away with this one. In second place there is Stedman ahead of Dupree, number 65, the championship leader who has got past John Dieterman in fourth and is looking for some solid points to add to his championship. In fact, the second place here would extend his lead. In the Golden Era Supersport, it's Mike Horbury that leads now ahead of Ian Popperwell, a former champion of uh, Thundersport GB and Street Fighters and Mini Twins as well. He's uh, been there and just about everywhere. But it is Chris Martin that uh, leads this one and is surely going to win. Further back, there's uh, number 16, Craig Jeff, battling for fifth place with Richard Blunt and Nick Williamson. Those guys have been in this championship for a couple of seasons now. But through the foggy S's, number 26, Martin on the green and red Kawasaki looks home and dry. There is this battle for second between Stedman, number 27, and uh, Dupree. That could go all the way to the line. Stedman from Skegness on the Dale Sports Services Yamaha and then Oli Dupree from Ware on the Peter Sims Honda. And uh, they're getting up pretty close, but the last lap flag is going to be removed and replaced by a checkered flag. And that's it. A wheelie across the line and a win for Chris Martin. Good result that. He's looking around uh, and he's almost mocking the opposition, isn't he? And that's close across the line. Oh, wow. And that's Oli Dupree, the championship leader. He's pinched it right on the line ahead of Stedman, who gives him uh, quite a, a weird thumbs up. I'm not sure he will when he finds out the results. In fourth place there is John Dieterman, and Richard Blunt in fifth and Craig Jeff in sixth place so on the podium it's like men in black look at that uh, there's Chris Martin the winner ahead of championship leader Dupree and Richard Stedman and in super sport as I mentioned before Horbury the winner from Ian Popperwell and Andy Whale 
Yeah, well, after yesterday's disaster, yeah, it's just good to get a few laps back out there for the Mistral Racing team. Like, it was nice. We got to start from 29th on the grid, so I had to pass a few people on the first few laps, and I really enjoyed it and got a lap record in the, in the meantime doing it. So, yeah, it was a good race, and I really enjoyed it. And thanks to the Mistral Racing team, Ian and Dave Dean, for putting the bike back together last night, and my dad as well. And I'd just like to thank my girlfriend and all the family for helping us out, and Arcon Leathers for supporting me all these years I've been racing. Thank you very much. Sparklight Racing, a Golden Era Super Sport winner, Mike Albury. Fantastic race, a lovely result. How was it for you? It was difficult. Uh, it's got stuck behind Greg Lewis on a 750, so you can imagine on a 600 it's quite hard work. I was passing him on the corners and passes me on the straight, and then I had to get braver and braver, which I didn't really want to, but uh, I did. Uh, pulled it off all right and just got him on the last lap. Uh, I didn't know, but I'd won the 600 as well, you know, so it was, it was a bonus. Uh, and uh, as for thanking people, I'd like to thank Ian and Neil from Sergeant Electrical Services. I wouldn't be able to do it if they didn't do their bit. And uh, my long-suffering girlfriend, Louise, I suppose. Um, thank you very much. And anybody else who's helped me, cheers. So then, up next, it is time for the Isle of Man race product, Street Fighters and Formula 400s. Big old Phil Crow there in the grandstand, just uh, keeping his eye on this race. There is number 121 on pole position. Martin Stania, a regular in the Street Fighter uh, paddock over the years, the rider from Stoke-on-Trent, MS Racing. There's Ryan Strafford, who leads the Street Fighter Extreme Championship overall. And uh, there is number 18, Paul Cunvin also on a Honda. Plenty of riders, some familiar names to keep an eye on in this one. Of course, look out for those little 400s as well. Joe Sheldon Shaw, number 10, second row. Uh, currently, uh, the rider that is fighting for that 400 championship with Lewis Barnes. And Lewis is out there, number 50. But down into turn one for the first time. It's going to be Stania, surely, that gets the whole shot from Stratford. Yes, it is. And there was a lime green flash in front of my eyes there, going quite hot down into uh, turn one. I think that might have been Lewis Barnes actually got a really decent start. There it is. It's actually Joe Sheldon Shaw. Sorry, apologies. Joe got off to a great start. Just got a glimpse there of Andy Driver on the MZ. There's number three, John Mead on the Sparklight Racing KTM. And uh, saw uh, John Michael... Quinlan and Ben Sewell there a bit further back, but it's Stania that has the advantage out there on a Suzuki 750 with flat bars. Joe Sheldon Shaw up into second place on the Kawasaki ZXR 400. And then it is Ryan Strafford on the rather unusual custom-made Triumph 675. And Cunvin, number 18, really going hot down into uh, the foggy S's, and he might just come out the other side all right. Dave Palferman the black and orange machine you'll see on another Triumph 675. He's up in a Street Fighter B rider. There is uh, Joe Sheldon Shaw ahead of Stratford and Cunvin and then uh, the black and orange machine there is Palferman. Rider with his chin almost on the deck on the 400 is Lewis Barnes and Lee Hutchinson. Nice to have Lee back out with us but uh, Martin Stania already clearing off at the front of this race. A championship for a larger bike, Street Fighter A's as uh, there's a change for second place and it's Cunvin that goes up into second and Strafford trying to fight back. Street Fighter B's slightly less capacity. Uh, Street Fighter C's again less capacity and then Formula 400's are exactly what you see. Uh, the, the bikes with fairings effectively, the only bikes with fairings out there on the circuit, the Formula 400's fighting away. They, what they lack in power they certainly make up for in uh, their corner speed. There is number 10, Joe Sheldon Shaw. 72 is Dave Palferman. Number 94, Phil Page. Nice to see uh, Phil out there on uh, the Honda 900 in seventh place where he belongs up in the top 10, known as Reg Prentice in the paddock. And uh, we've also got number 44 there in the top eight, Mick Riddle, number 44, who I noticed on uh, Facebook the other day actually quoted that he'd managed to stay on the saddle now for an entire 12 months without crashing. Well, he has well and truly jinxed himself, uh, but he won't be racing for a little while. There he is, number 44, green bike, uh, sponsored by the Royal Air Force Motorsports Association. He's off to the Falkland Islands for four months after this round, so he won't be at Snetterton. Um, so good luck to you, Mick, and we'll see you a bit later on in the year. So. Uh, he's managed to go a whole season without crashing. That is a miracle. There's number 57, Ryan Strafford. He's got a flat cap sticker over, hovering over his number five. 
I'll try and find out a bit more about that at Snetterton. That's our next round. And there's Lewis Barnes, number 50, going up underneath Reg Prentice, number 94 there. Phil Page, who uh, was fighting it out for a Street Fighter B Championship when Thundersport very first, well, first season, I think, 2008. He was having a good old battle uh, out there on a Honda, so he's used to this Street Fighter Championship. Oh, and Barnes there going way wide down into the old hairpin. And let's see if he's managed to recover that, get back on. Oh, he's through the uh, kitty litter. And that's deep stuff. I tell you what, he's doing a good job of getting out of there. Lewis Barnes, number 50, doing everything he can. And that's, uh, well, hats off. He's done very well there to get himself out of trouble, is Lewis Barnes. And uh, he's back out on circuit, but he's lost quite a lot of ground. Meanwhile, it is number 121, Stoke-on-Trent rider Martin Stania that leads this. There's Stratford up ahead of John Mead from Wickford in Sparklight Racing KTM and uh, John Mead just being lapped there a number of riders just uh, getting lapped at this moment in time Mick Riddle just up ahead of Phil Page at the moment Adam Palferman, brother of Dave Palferman is up in the top ten as well last lap flag is out Kevin Howdle's in the ninth place on Street Fighter A Michael Nealon's in the top ten Keith Warren the reigning Street Fighter C champion currently leading ahead of Duncan McMillan and he's got quite an advantage over him as well and Lewis Barnes has just gone across the line so he's slotted in behind them there is Strafford just putting uh, a lap on Joe Miller on the Honda 500 Ryan Strafford who uh, just missed out on winning championships last year the rider from Murfield on the Access Drilling Triumph um, but uh, it is Joe Sheldon Shaw that looks like he's on his way to Formula 400 victory. The rider from Sheffield on the LSR racing KLM Kawasaki. There's Stania, the overall race leader. Big gap then back to Paul Cunvin there, number 18, who's lapping Dave Blakey. Cunvin is doing well so far this season. Rider from Kings Lynn, another one that rides under the banner of the RAF Motorsports Association. And in a moment you'll see... Uh, battle that's uh, Joe Sheldon Shaw the Formula 400 leader then it's Dave Palferman, Mick Riddle and Phil Page I mentioned Phil a moment ago number 94 he also helps out behind the scenes with Thundersport at, uh, GB his, uh, his bike in fact is a Hornet with a Blade 900 engine uh, that's been stuck into it courtesy of uh, Chief Scrutineer Stuart Smart so uh, a rather odd uh, mix up there but it seems to be doing the trick at the moment um, there's number 57, Strafford, who looks set to finish in third place overall. Dave Palferman, number 72, British Army rider from Hereford. Just exiting the Foggy S's for the final time. And the chequered flag is being made ready now. And uh, Stanny has absolutely cleared off in this one. He's got uh, an eight-second gap over the rest of the field. So it's a nice win there for Martin Stanier. He takes it from Paul Cunvin on the Street Fighter Honda 600 Street Fighter B. Strafford third, Joe Sheldon Shaw in fourth place, winning the 400 to head of Dave Palferman and Mick Riddle. So, Street Fighter A winner there, Martin Stanier up ahead of Phil Page and Kevin Howell. Street Fighter B is Paul Cunvin, Ryan Strafford and Dave Palferman. In Street Fighter C, we've got Keith Warren, Doug McMillan and Andy Driver. And then in the 400s, the winner is Joe Sheldon Shaw from Lewis Barnes and Rob Pragnall. Uh, Formula 400 winner, Joe Sheldon Shaw, you must have enjoyed that, great, great result. Yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it, just tried to get a good start uh, and then just control my lead from there. And uh, I'd just like to thank uh, mum, dad, family, friends, Jim and, uh, Jim and Taz, Burke Hull Engineering, ITRM Chiropractic, uh, Paul for lending me the bike and Les and Jane. Uh, Street Fighter A winner Martin Stanier, you must be enjoying this being the top step of the podium again. Yeah, we've been struggling for a long time really. Uh, uh, I think we found a bit of form here last tail end of last season. And uh, yeah, we started good and strong and uh, we seem to have got the bike fixed finally. Uh, so yeah, we had a good race, got, uh, got away from the other lads and uh, just watched my lap times really. OK then, four done, four to go. Join us again after the break for the second Buff Headwear Thumbersport 500 race.
Welcome back to Donington Park for the second Buff Headwear Thundersport 500 race. So let's hope it's just as good as the one we saw earlier on. Rob Morby there on pole will be looking to better himself in this race. There's Adam Horton who just missed out on that win earlier on. So he'll be looking to get revenge. And uh, there is number 411. Didn't see much of Alan Naylor in race one. Let's see what he can do here in race two. Carl Smalley was the championship leader coming into this event. He was third in race one. There he is, number 69 with just about the brightest bike out there. That's Rob Morby on pole position. Dave walks off the front of the grid. Matt will be on the lights. So come on, Matty. Let them go. And away we go. And there's a lot of wheels spin from the rear end there. Rob Morby down into turn one. And they're weaving and they're bucking and all sorts going on. But it's going to be Horton that gets the whole shot, surely. Or is it going to be Smalley? No, Smalley surely got it there. Down into turn one as uh, all the riders head out. I just saw a quick glimpse there of Phil Doody, number 147. Uh, having a ride out, but it's Smalley that leads from Horton. Then in third place, straight down to business is Tom Leonard, of course. Tom, number 21, the rider who won race one. Uh, white and red leathers, keep an eye out for him. There's number 40, Steve Dufton, just taking wide line down into the old hairpin. But the race leader once more, Carl Smalley. Now, Carl in race one here, the rider with the green and pink helmet, uh, was in third place, just couldn't quite get his nose in the frame for the overall win at the end there. So can he do it this time? Either way, uh, if he keeps on finishing races in the top three like he is, he's going to be there for the championship. But it'd be great if we've got this sort of fighting all the way till the end of the season. And look at this, three abreast now. Horton it is that has the lead, is it? No, Leonard from third to first. Well, look at that. What a move that was from Leonard. He looked pumped up, didn't he, after that first race. He looked delighted with the victory, and he's trying to get the double here on Sunday here on Thundersport Plus. There's a better start this time from Rob Morby. Despite being on pole position, he's up into fourth place there, ahead of number 101, Colin Mooney. Uh, Colin, one of the riders who's uh, fighting in the Seniors Cup and looking to win that championship this year ahead of Rob Morby but it's Tom Leonard now that leads this one number 21 sponsored by uh, Worcester Bosch Group I've got a Worcester boiler and at the moment he is boiling because he is flying through this pack he is hot to trot ahead of number 69 Carl Smalley and Adam Horton at the moment uh, with no disrespect to the rest of the field, these three do look the class off the field. They're just able to break away from the rest of the pack. Rob Morby doing everything he can there in fourth to keep up with them. And Morby is an experienced candidate. And Smalley has dropped down to third again. And so he's not even going to become the bridesmaid at this rate. He's down into third place. That'll be 16 points. And when you start jostling for first, second and third, there's a lot of points that can be won and lost. 25 for the win, 20 for second, 16 for third. And at the moment, Tom Leonard is uh, in pole position to take another 25 points. But Adam Horton will be looking at his every move. He'll be working out what he did wrong in race one and trying to put that right. These three really going for it down the start, finish straight. Now Adam Horton pulls out of the slipstream, down into the Foggy S's. He can't quite keep up with Leonard, who's very strong on the brakes, down into the Foggy S's. It's still Rob Morby in fourth place. Phil Brown's up there as well, the senior cut rider, as you see. 17 and 24 down into the Foggy S's. Uh, number 17, David Moss. And uh, number 24, Dave Jeff. Most definitely senior riders <laughs> as they go through the Foggy S's. And uh, a few more riders head over towards the mobile loop. Jonathan Perry there, Lewis Bramwell, Matt Snow, Jack Little, Dave Grace. Uh, all inside the points. There's the uh, line green number 83. Spot him from an absolute mile away. 83 is Dean Dixon from Gainsborough on the Rat Out Racing Honda. All of these bikes, all identical. Uh, you can have a Suzuki or a Kawasaki if you wish, but uh, the weapon of choice is the Honda CB500. Cheap bike class to race in this. And as you can see at the front, good fun also. As uh, we see Rob Morby there just trying to close in it. It's Horton that leads from Tom Leonard. So Horton's gone out into the lead. He's very quick in this first sector. And there's a small gap back, a couple of bike lengths maybe to Carl Smalley. Good lap time though from Rob Morby in fourth place. Uh, 152.4. And he's lapping now at the front pace. Oh, and there's a, there's a rider or two down there. Marshall's running over towards one of the rookies who's gone missing. Well... That could be one of any because on the time screens we've lost two or three riders now. Pat Tyne and uh, Peter Bardell have gone missing uh, so far from this race, but not sure who that was. This is the front though. This is the battle for the win. Adam Horton at the moment has it from Tom Leonard. 
who was looking very strong in race one and is trying to get on terms with him now. And Rob Morby's done a good job of breaking away from the battle for fourth place and catching up with Carl Smalley in third. There's number 19 and number 22 just going into the foggy S's now. Uh, number 19 is Harley Preble, number 22, Jack Little. But onto the start finish straight we go and we've got two groups of two. The battle for first and second and the battle for third and fourth. It's Tom Leonard who's now putting out of the slipstream of Adam Horton at the front and tries to get himself in the lead and does so. So a change for the lead there as Tom Leonard, the winner from earlier, gets out in front once more. And Adam Horton must be wondering what he's got to do here to win a 500 race. And they're side by side down through Craner Curves and on these bikes it'll be almost flat out. And he stuffs it up the inside of Tom Le Oh, look at this racing, toing and throwing. Is this scripted? Have they looked at some sort of script before the start of this? Because it's nice and clean racing, I've got to say. But it is exciting as they now come up towards McLean's corner and Horton fancy to look up the inside. It's a tight corner, that, but uh, you can fit more than one bike length through there. One bike's width, should I say, up towards the blind entry into Coppice. And Horton just has it from Leonard. It's still Smalley in third ahead of Rob Morby. R Rob Morby is looking pretty good there as they go on to the back straight. Meanwhile, in the background, Phil Brown, Steve Wood, Adam Palferman and Lewis Bramwell are fighting it out to get into the top five. And Leonard is through again, late on the brakes as ever, into the foggy S's. The only problem for him there is that Adam Horton has got a lot of drive out of the S's and will probably have a look up the inside down into the Melbourne loop as we look once more at the battles going on further down. There is that number 22, Jack Little. This is the battle for 11th, 10th. Oh, and that's uh, number 101 down there. That's Colin Mooney and Alan Naylor, who was on the front row. So Mooney and Naylor have gone down. The last lap flag is out, though. So we're just going to concentrate on what's going on at the front of this. Leonard it is that wins. Uh, well, sorry, Leeds are getting ahead of myself. Checker flag not out yet. He had the win earlier. Can he get number two? Adam Horton in second place. It's surely going to be between these two. I don't think Smalley and Rob Morby can catch them. Smalley looks good for third at the moment. These two again side by side down through Crane the Curves. And it's Horton that has the advantage. Down into the old hairpin. Horton's taking the tight line. And Leonard's looking to go around the outside. It's not going to happen. Uphill now. Around and under Starkey's Bridge and Schwantz Corner. Schwantz Curve, sorry, into McLean's. It's Horton still that has it from Tom Leonard, number 21. Now up to the blind apex corner of Coppice and it's important to get some good drive through here so that you can have a nice run down the back straight. And Leonard, we've seen on previous laps, is very strong on the brakes down into Foggy Esses. Horton has it at the moment, it's in his own hands and he's wise to the move that Tom's put on him before. He's taking the defensive line and Leonard says, OK, I'll go around the outside then. <laughs> he's done it through the Foggy Esses. Leonard is looking to win another one here and they're going to have to battle it out down into the Melbourne loop. Meanwhile, this scrap further down. Oh, number 19 getting beaten up there. This is the battle for the top 10. Number 19 struggling, Harley Preble down into the Melbourne loop. Tom Leonard takes the wide line, but it's all the drive for Horton. Oh, my word, have that, he says, as he stops it up the inside on the exit of the uh, Melbourne loop. Now into Goddard once more, and this time Horton has his revenge. What a race in the Thundersport 500. Let's have more of that this season, please. Oh, and there's thumbs up there, but a little point in the direction of Adam Horton to say that was almost a little too naughty. Adam Horton wins from Tom Leonard, Smalley third, fourth for Rob Morby, wins the Seniors Cup, Phil Brown fifth, and Steve Wood in sixth place. Great racing from these three and a great win there for Adam Horton. Looking forward to the rest of the championship in the Seniors Cup. Morby's got it from Phil Brown and David Moss. So the championship heading into the next round. It's closed up. Carl Smalley still leading. But Adam Horton and Tom Leonard are coming. They're second and third ahead of Morby, Palferman and Steve Wood. And in the Seniors Cup, Colin Mooney moves into the lead four points ahead of Rob Morby. And that's after falling at the Melbourne Loop as well. Moss in third ahead of Brian Parry and Bezik. Buff Headwear, Thundersport 500 winner, Adam Horton. Fantastic. I mean, that was a tough, close race, man. Oh, we were lent on each other every single corner. And it was just, I mean, Tom's a dead good racer. He's a clean, but it's a proper aggressive. So it was, uh, it was a nice to have a good race. But it looked good on telly, which it already has been. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, it was, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And to get rider of the day, Ryder Marshalls, thank you very much. I'll be spending that on the, in the pub tonight. Um, I'd just like to thank Dinosaur for Walter Croman and Basin Sandbach, who helped me out massively. My mum, my dad, my girlfriend, Hayley, all, my, all everyone that supported me. And I'd like to just uh, say my thoughts are with Ian Alkins, family and friends. So, cheers. Rob Morby, very well done. How'd the race go for you? Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was been a difficult weekend, but, but to end with a win in the seniors was fantastic. And I, I was almost back to where I should be, uh, and it felt good. So we'll carry on the fight to Snetterton, and hopefully it'll go as well again. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody at Racing Lines. Uh, Ian Hawkins, who sadly passed away, is a, a big customer to Racing Lines and a great friend. So it's been a difficult weekend, but it's a great way to end. Coming up after the break, don't go anywhere folks, time for the second race in the AR Racing Pre-National 600s. Welcome back to Donington Park. Look like carbon fibre shoes there for the grid girl holding the board for the A&R &R Racing Pre-National 600s. And the question really is, can anyone stop number 11, Stephen Parsons, the championship leader? Well, there's number 57, Matt True Love, and number 95, Dean Mulcahy. Those two will do the very best they can to prevent Parsons from clearing off. There he is on the blue and white giraffe racing triumph rider. Quite a tall rider, but he tucks himself well on that triumph. And so far, he's been the dominant force in this field full of riders that are yet to attain the full national license on the second row there keep an eye out for darren ibbotson uh, paul rogers is also on the third row he's been going well and away from the line a good start there from uh, adam revel number 33 from fourth on the grid there you see him bright green kawasaki and is he going to get the whole shot yes he is that's a fabulous start there from adam revel and uh, well stephen parsons doesn't get that one right but he's there in second place number 11 on the blue and white triumph and will surely try and catapult his way through to the front there's number 57 in third place matt true love it's dean mulcahy in fourth the yellow and black bike just going through your picture at the bottom of the screen there's number 80 ace so webb and uh, all of them make it through cleanly. Revel it is that leads from Parsons and Matt Truelove. Truelove out there on the all-black Suzuki 600. Um, and he's relatively a rookie in this class. Dean Mulkey then following in behind. Number 95, uh, one of the regular Phoenix motorsport riders. Uh, the Phoenix race team, should I say. And there's a change for the lead then. Parsons does go up. Oh, that was really close down into the foggy S's. Now, I'm not even sure if that was uh, as clean as it looked, but if they've made it both, well, they've both made it out okay. So that was tight, and Revel says, I'll have that back. Thank you very much. Down into the Melbourne Loop. So Revel giving as good as he gets at the moment, and Parsons has still managed to come out of that one on top. So maybe Revel just ran wide on the exit of the Melbourne Loop. Easily done, but Parsons it is that uh, manages to take the lead across the line after a hectic first lap for him. Adam Revel in second, Matt Trulove third, then it's Dean Mulkey in fourth place. In fifth there is number 71, Paul Rogers. And uh, you've also got Brendan Malander in there, Jake Poole, number 53, number 89, Daz Odlin. Chris Wilkinson's not got a bad start either. Uh, Jake Poole was from 13th on the grid. Chris Wilkinson, 21st on the grid. He's already into a points position. But Stephen Parsons, who earlier on uh, absolutely swept the field, he's lapping almost two seconds quicker than anyone else at the moment as we see a battle here between numbers five and six for seventh and eighth on the in the race Chris Sanders is number five number six is Brendan Malander and uh, having got off to a great start Adam Revel in second there is just coming under a bit of pressure from Matt Trulove number 57 uh, Matt who uh, hails from Lincoln on a privately run Suzuki Adam Revel there in second number 33 from Grimsby on the team auto designs Kawasaki uh, with the orange bib on, first full season of racing. Into the foggy S as we go then, and already Parsons has got himself a four or five second advantage. Dean Mulkey just not quite on the money this weekend uh, to what we're used to seeing anyway. And there's a problem there for number 92. It's Matt Johnston who's got issues with his bike. Earlier in this race, we've already lost Perry Davidson, Dean Young and Steve Yellett, but Matt Johnston has gone missing now. This is the lead that uh, Stephen Parsons has at the front of this. And I tell you what, if he carries on like this, he'll win the championship by round four or five. Uh, these guys need to find something to catch up with him. Snetterton at the next, next round, perhaps. Slightly different circuit. We'll see what happens. There's Dean Mulkey, number 95, Phoenix Race Team, bike the black machine. And uh, number 71, 
Paul Rogers from Boston on the uh, Dodge Speed Racing well turned out Kawasaki they are fighting for 5th and 6th place sorry 4th place in fact Darren Ebbotson catching the group as well number 50 there and the black Kawasaki just at the back of that group with the orange vest on but the race leader is still Stephen Parsons he's got this one in the bag he looks so smooth for such a tall rider uh, you'd think it might affect him overall but uh, that's a uh, Triumph certainly not set up too badly at all. Dean Mulkey at the moment has got fourth place, number 95, but he's got company. Number 71 and number 50 catching Paul Rogers and Darren Ibbotson. There's number 53 and number 6. 53, Jake Poole, uh, who's come up from 13th on the grid. Number 6 is Brendan Mallander. Last lap flag out then for Pearson, who's just put in a 37.8, which I can tell you has absolutely smashed the lap record to bits. It was a 39.440 from Dean Pierce, and uh, Stephen Parsons is into, uh, well, he's two seconds clear of that. Dean Mulcahy here in fourth place. It's still Revel and True Love in second and third. And Mulcahy at the moment is on for 13 points, but he's got two riders there that look pretty hungry. Uh, behind him in fifth and sixth, as number 11 there, Stephen Parsons, the race leader, just puts a lap on Carl Dyer. Carl currently in 26th place, a rider from uh, South Sea, one of the Royal Navy riders. Parsons doing very well on the Giraffe Racing Triumph, a rider from Nondorp, just revving down the box, all smooth and neatly done, down into the Foggy Esters, doesn't look like making any mistakes here as he exits and heads towards the Melbourne Loop. There's Revel in second, uh, he's uh, broken away from the advances of Matt True Love here in third place on the black and blue Suzuki. Chris Sanders there is in seventh place but he's just behind that group of riders that include Dean Mulcahy and there is Mulcahy and there is number 71 Paul Rogers and Mulcahy just got to hold on now until the checkered flag which is out and it's another win for Steve Parsons. Unstoppable here at Donington Park and he'll extend his championship lead overall as we head to Snetterton in Norfolk next month. Adam Revel it is that has taken second place after a monster start from the second row and got the whole shot. Matt True Love third ahead of Paul Rogers, Darren Ibbotson and Dean Mulcahy. There's your top three then on the podium. Steve Parsons, Adam Revel on the left and Matt True Love on the right. And in the championship overall, it's Adam Revel that leads by six points ahead of Stephen Parsons. How long will that last? Dean Mulcahy in third ahead of Ibbotson, True Love and Sanders. Um, yeah, it was a good race. We can... We got away nicely, we had a bit of a battle to start with which made it a bit more entertaining for me and towards the end my tyre was sliding a bit so it was good fun with that one, it made, made me smile anyway inside my helmet so I she was alright. So here we go then, time for the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Superbikes and Super Sport. Now if you want some fun whilst I keep my eye on the front of the grid in the early stages, keep an eye out for Chris Martin again from 29th on the grid number 26. There's number 27. That's Richard Stedman, who was up in the top three in race one. John Dieterman there led in the early stages of the earlier race, but managed to just fall away from the podium. And there's the championship leader overall, Oli Dupree, number 65 on the Honda SP2 uh, in the old Colin Edwards uh, Laguna Seca special round, I think it was uh, quite a while back now, but it's still a lovely looking machine. Dave walks off the grid, Matty on the lights. The lights go out and we are ready to go. It's a good start there from second place for John Dieterman number 18 as they head down into turn one Redgate corner and it is Dieterman from Stedman and Ollie Dupree with the uh, whole shot another good start there for Chris Martin number 26 and uh, number one Richard Blunt is got a good start as well the defending champion that's why he's got number one on his bike look at Chris Martin there he's already into the top 12 that is remarkable stuff from 29th on the grid so He'll be up at the sharp end in no time at all. It's Dieterman from Dupree, the championship leader, uh, going around the outside. No, that can't be right. No, and it's, he's been just pushed back a bit there as they go up towards Coppice Corner. It's Dieterman from Dupree, Stedman, and then uh, Richard Blunt, number one. And Dieterman now just pushing through that. Yamaha certainly got a bit of pace. And... Uh, into the foggy S as we go. Dupree takes a really wide line there and might just lose out on second overall. And Chris Norris has gone wide. And there's Chris Martin. And uh, Chris Martin, uh, Chris Norris has lost out in a couple of places. Chris Martin has gone through. Martin is going to be at the sharp end of this in 
probably about a lap's time. It is Dieterman that leads. Stedman, nice and solid move up the inside of championship leader Dupree there. And then last year's overall champion, Richard Blunt. He looked like new leathers on uh, Blunt's there in fourth place. This the uh, venue, of course, from a couple of seasons ago, or last season, sorry, where Blunt won the championship. He left it late, but in the end, it was uh, a spectacle. And there's Chris Martin in fifth place at the uh, end of the uh, first lap. He's gone from 29th to 5th. So um, certainly, I think it's fair to say, is rather comfortable with the Kawasaki 750. It's Dieterman that has the advantage, though, looking very happy with life himself on that Yamaha, having moved on to the... Uh, Baxi Yamaha rode the 860 self-made Ducati last year and he uh, comes up towards McLean's with the lead at the moment ahead of Stedman and Dupree. Then it is Richard Blunt number one who any second now will find another Kawasaki up alongside him and probably past him as Chris Martin. In fact it's happened already. Chris Martin goes up into fourth place number 26 and it's only a matter of time now as uh, a few crows dice with death on the back straight. There's uh, Dieterman that has the advantage ahead of Dupree, Stedman and Chris Martin. He's already broken away from defending champion Richard Blunt. Just a quick update on the uh, Super Sport as we watch Chris Martin here. Is he going to have a look straight away? Yes, he is from fourth. Oh, he almost got his nose chopped off there. Oh, he's not afraid of a move, is he? Chris Martin. Oh, not quite naughty enough to get punished, but uh, that'll do. Chris Martin there. Uh, barging his way past them, and he's got past Debris into Goddard's as well. So it's uh, Chris Martin up to second place, still Dieterman that leads. In the Golden Era Super Sport, Andy Whale and Ian Popperwell are locking horns for the win in the Super Sport category ahead of Sam Nicholson and Richie Harrison. Uh, but at the front of this one, Chris Martin is in the lead and will surely now look to clear off uh, further back there. We've got uh, battles going on all the way through the field. Chris Norris is recovered to sixth place ahead of Andy Windsor and Greg Lewis. There's Dupree up ahead of Richard Stedman. Dupree who had an excellent round back at uh, Brands Hatch. And now Chris Martin, well, he's almost up with John Dieterman, the rider from Preston on the team backseat Yamaha. Martin who has been just in about every paddock possible over the years. He was British super sport rider. He was with the Gearlink uh, Kawasaki team for a while. And here he goes up the inside. Is he going to pull the trigger? Yes, he is. Nicely done that using all the inside curb at the Foggy S's. And uh, number 26 makes it through into the lead ahead of John Dieterman. And then in third place at the moment, it is Oli Dupree. So it is Martin that leads this race. Join us again after the break. Welcome back to Donington Park. It's the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Superbikes and Super Sport. Just before the break, it was Chris Martin that managed to get out in front. And as you can see, he's cleared off ahead of number 18, John Dieterman. There's Richard Stedman, number 27 in third, having a big, long look over his shoulder. And he'll be looking back to Ollie Dupree. So uh, Richard Blunt's there as well. But uh, these guys have all just managed to break away from each other really it's very unusual in this class to see uh, riders splitting themselves up and having lonely races as Andy Wintle there just gets lapped by Chris Martin down at the Melbourne Loop John Dieterman in second but on to the start finish straight now for number 26 Martin and the last lap flag is out and down towards Redgate corner such a great start from 29th on the grid. And uh, managed to get himself up into fifth place by the end of the first lap. There's Dupree, uh, currently behind Richard Blunt. So the defending champion has gone past the championship leader. And that will do Blunt's uh, confidence some good as we head to Norfolk next round. There's uh, Norris, number 22, and Andrew Windsor, 30, and Greg Lewis, number 46. Some classic colours on the old Yamaha there, love that. Chris Martin. It is that has the advantage through McLean's and up towards Coppice. He is going to win this race by quite a considerable distance ahead of what should be uh, John Dieterman. And you can see there Martin just checking over his shoulder to make sure that he can uh, get himself into cruise control mode across the line through Foggy S's. Then it's just a couple of corners left for him. 
and he'll take the double win. There's Dieterman, number 18. There's number 27, Stedman, and uh, number 92, that's Jack Jeffrey just being lapped. Now, uh, where has John Dieterman just gone? Uh, that's a, ah, there's John Dieterman. So that's that's pretty poor luck. That is on the final lap. I'm not sure there must be a mechanical. And John Dieterman's out of it. So that means that Richard Stedman moves up into second. And Richard Blunt will be back on the podium. The defending champion, number one. Uh, so across the line then, the checkered flag is out. It's a decent win that from Chris Martin. 29th on the grid to another win. Time to get the shades on. It's uh, Richard Stedman in second place. And that'll do him some favours in the championship ahead of Richard Blunt, Oli Dupree, Nick Williamson and Chris Norris. So on the podium then, the happy three in the middle there, Chris Martin, Richard Stedman on the left and defending champion Blunt on the right. In the Super Sport it was a win for Andy Whale ahead of Ian Popperwell and Sam Nicholson. What does that do to the championship then in the Golden Era Superbikes? It's still Dupree that leads by 24 ahead of Stedman. Pearson in third. Defending champion Richard Blum with a bit of work to do there in fourth overall. And in the Golden Era Super Sport, Andy Whale has the lead. 21 ahead of Richie Harrison. Sam Nicholson third ahead of Pearson, Martin and Mike Horbury. Andy Whale, uh, winner of the uh, Super Sport Golden Era. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, thrilled to bits. Uh, it was a bit of a lucky win, to be honest. Uh, unlucky for Poppy, uh, run out of petrol across the line, so he says. <laughs> and uh, well done Sam Nicholson as well. He's been a threat all weekend and he's, uh, he's rode well. But yeah, I'm thrilled to bits of the win and uh, managed to hang on to the championship win as well. So it's all good. You've got some sponsors you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Nutters Fastenings and Higher Link. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Gatspeed Racing for all their support. And I'd like to say a big thank you to my girlfriend Kim for uh, standing by my side and being there and uh, supporting me all the way. So, thank you for that. What a great race. I mean, you're away with it, man. Yeah, well, I got a bit better start this time. Uh, last time, someone went straight across the grid in front of me, obviously, in race one, and I had a bit more of a challenge, but this time I got through cleaner. Uh, obviously, I think it was one of the front runners, was, he'd got a good lead this time, so it gave me a, a clear track for a few laps to catch him, and then, yeah, I enjoyed the rest of the race when I got in front and got a good feeling for the bike, and hopefully he'll do a good job for the boys that are going to the TT on it. Stay where you're sat. The final race of this programme, the Isle of Man race products, Street Fighters and Formula 400s. Martin Stanier looking to do the double here today, number 121 on pole position. There's Ryan Strafford though, number 57, a lively character, likeable as well, always in the paddock with a smile on his face. There's Paul Cumbin, who got the better of uh, Ryan in that first race earlier, and there is the man on pole. Um, he'll be difficult to stop on that uh, GSXR 750, further back there is number 80, Michael Nealands on a bike that looks a bit like a trifle. And away we go, ready for the start of the Isle of Man Race Products, Street Fighters and Formula 400s. Good start from uh, Stratford there, second on the grid, number 57 on that odd looking triumph and he's going to get the whole shot down into turn one no he's not it is Stania around the outside from the front row from pole position he's managed to get away someone's pulling off already before we've even got started uh, at the end of the start finish straight but stania has got straight down to business and it's Stratford in second place a good start from Dave Palfman too number 72 on the black and orange uh, triumph 675 Rob Pragnall there number 98 Duncan McMillan number 7 going through and number three again, John Mead, but it is Stania that leads. Number 121, rider from Stoke-on-Trent on the MS Racing Suzuki GSX-R 750. It really is just a Jexa uh, 750 flat bars and fairings off. And hey presto, you have yourself a street fighter. In second place is uh, Paul Convent, number 18, rider from uh, Kings Lynn, riding under the Royal Air Force uh, Motorsports Association banner. And then it's Joe Sheldon Shaw there, number 10, going through. From Sheffield on the LSR Racing KL, um, KLM Kawasaki. Not sure if that's the airliner KLM. We'll have to find out. But that's not bad sponsorship, is it? If you've got it, Dave Powell from in there on the black and orange bike, just behind Joe Sheldon Shaw. Phil Page is up there. There's Lewis Barnes, who went wide earlier down into the gravel. Number 50, uh, Formula 400 rider, who was leading the 400 championship after we left France. Hatch, but across the line already. Huge lead built up there from. Martin Stanier, he's won some races at Thundersport in his time as Martin, uh, a decent rider in this category. Paul Convin there is uh, coming on song this season. Stratford has won a few as well over the last couple of seasons, but has been the bridesmaid more than he has been the winner. So uh, he'll want to 
pick up that bride's dress soon. There's the trifle, uh, Michael Nielsen, M Michael Nealens, and uh, he's got his orange bib on. Gecko Racing, his team name for this season, and there is Ryan Strafford. I believe Strafford's bike used to belong to a certain Andy Denyer, the meerkat. Uh, he had a bike that looked a bit like that. I'm pretty sure it is a similar bike that used to belong to Andy. You have to find that out. wonder what Andy's up to. Former champion in this class, known as the Meerkat. And, uh, of course, uh, there's number one, another former champion. And that is uh, Street Fighter C rider Keith Warren on the Aprilia 550. Dunk McMillan there as well. But uh, Martin Stanier it is that has the advantage in this race so far. There's Reg Prentice. Phil Page, number 94, ahead of Michael Riddle, and number 32, Adam Palfreman. Adam, who took a bit of a break from racing last season. He was racing in so many classes in 2012 that it, he pretty much wore himself out last year. Was, so he only attended one or two race meetings, and he's back to business again this year. There's a rider in the background there with his arms folded, and that looks like a similar stance to Andy Driver. And I've just noticed that he's not gone past on the time screens. Andy Driver is watching this one from Goddard. Um, so I don't know what's happened to him or his MZ, whether that's a fall. Surely it can't be a mechanical, not on the factory MZ. Uh, but Andy is uh, watching this one from a distance. He'll be back for Slet. Oh, my word. There was a major moment there for Joe Sheldon Shaw as he went down into Redgate Corner. And that would have been heart in mouth moment. Looked like he sort of lost the rear end as he was actually turning into the corner. Uh, it's almost like it nipped up the bike. So I'm not sure what's happened there, but Joe Sheldon Shaw's out of this one, surely. Uh, down into turn one, and the rider that won the first Formula 400 race won't be winning it again here. Into Coppice Corner, though, your race leader, Martin Stanier. There's number 130 and number 82. One, uh, 130 is Joe Goddard. Number 82 is Ricky Allen. There's Lewis Barnes, who is uh, leading the Formula 400 race, currently up in the top eight. But Stania leads overall, number 121. It's coming up to put another lap or two on a few riders. There's Strafford in second place, so he's had a good dust up here in this race with Paul Convin. These two riders both battling it out in Street Fighter B, and just as he was going down through the gears and into Goddard's there, Strafford, he had a bit of a problem, and he's lost, he must have hit neutral. But he's lost uh, some ground, and Paul Convin has moved back up into second place. You can see in the background, though, Strafford giving it some. Martin Stanley has already gone through. There's nothing wrong with the speed of that bike, is there, Ryan? As he passes Paul Convin, and these two are going to go for it right down to the wire. As Convin now looks to gain some traction. Look at the traffic they've got ahead of them as they go through Crane of Curves, though. No such drama for Martin Stanier. He's going to win this one. There's Dave Powell from a good race from him. He's uh, fourth overall. Also a decent race from his brother Adam. He was 11th on the grid and he's getting himself up into the top eight. But uh, unfortunately for Adam, it's his brother that's going to get the bragging rights sorted out over in the uh, awning when they finish this race. And hopefully we'll see the brothers out in full force again at uh, Snetterton. But through the Foggy S's and just a few turns to negotiate now for Martin Stanier. This is number 50, Lewis Barnes, who's got past Mick Riddle. Now, they're not in the same championship, but uh, there's a lot of pride at stake there. And number 80 and number 7, that's Michael Nealens and Duncan McMillan. Duncan nicely does it up the inside, and he gains a place. Uh, Duncan, who's in the Street Fighter C category. But the checkered flag is out, and it is a win for Martin Stanier once again. You're going to have to wait five or six seconds for the second group to come through. There is Ryan Strafford who takes second place and Paul Cunvin in third overall. So it's Strafford that wins Street Fighter, the Street Fighter B battle ahead of Cunvin. Dave Palfreman in a somewhat lonely fourth place there ahead of Mick Riddle who's off to the Falklands after this. Good luck Mick. And then Lewis Barnes wins the Formula 400 in sixth place. So Street Fighter A winner Martin Stanier there with Phil Page and Kevin Howdle. Street Fighter B podium Ryan Strafford wins from Paul Cunvin and Dave Palfreman. Street Fighter C, Duncan McMillan there with Keith Warren and Adrian Bridges. And in the 400s, it's Lewis Barnes that's taken the win ahead of Richie Connell and Rob Pragnall. So the points then, as we head over to Sonny Snett, Ryan Strafford leads overall, but the lead has come down. Paul Cunvin there in second place ahead of Mick Riddle, Dave Palfman, Adam Palfman and Martin Stanier. 
And in the Formula 400s, Lewis Barnes it is that has the advantage, 25 ahead of Joe Sheldon Shaw and Rob Frank. Yeah, I had a good uh, clean race. It was a little bit lonely out there, on the, uh, just on my own, whizzing about. But yeah, we're getting there. We're, the bike's going good, so we're uh, looking forward to Snetterton now. Everything's uh, in place to go well now. So uh, just like to say a big thanks to uh, Maxton for the suspension setup and uh, Chris and Haley at Moto 46, and all the family and friends who have come to uh, support us, including Megan, who's jumping up and down behind me. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Really good time this weekend. Been a bit of a struggle yesterday with bike problems, but today was a bit better, more power. Had good battles with the street fighters. Shame what happened to Joe, but well, it'd been good to battle with him really. But uh, I'd like to thank Mum, Dad, Tom, and Jordan Reeves, uh, Phil Rich's Body Repair, Steve Line Motorcycle Repairs, and all my family for supporting me really. So round two comes to a close here from Donington Park, the GP circuit, and next up in May is Snetterton in Norfolk. Join us for that one. It is my sad duty, however, to report that long-time Thundersport GB competitor Ian Olkins lost his life in a racing incident at Donington Park on Saturday, the 12th of April. On Sunday, his fellow Thundersport 500 competitors took part in a lap of honour in his memory, led by his wife Jade, and we would like to extend thanks to Andy, Donna and Jordan Watling, Will and Ben, Dave Bezik, David Moss and Phil Doody for making the tribute possible. The condolences of the entire Thundersport GB community, Donington Park Racing, the Auto Cycle Union and his many racing friends go out to Jade, their daughter Phoebe and Ian's extended family.